Welcome to part one of configuring model check for Creo Parametric. First, I'm going to start off with just a couple of slides to explain some basics about configuring model check. Be aware that there are a number of different files related to how model check behaves. First, there's one called a config init.mc. This is your initialization settings file. We will cover that one in this video. There are also a couple different condition files so that you can have different checks based on your different models. But the one I'll do in the next video will cover the checks files. In other words, how to set up what you want to be checked and whether it's going to report an error or a warning or just be run or not run at all. You also have a start configurations file. I like that one because that's a way that you can have your models updated to have the correct layers or relations or even combination states. There's also a constants file and a status file. So just be aware that there are a whole bunch of different files related to model check. In this video, we're going to talk about some initial setup that I like to do. So be aware that the initial location for the files that Creo Parametric uses for model check are located in your load point, then you go into the date code folder, and rather than going into the Creo Parametric folder, you go into the common files, and right in the common files, there's a model check folder, and then you dig down a few levels, then you will find the actual config folder. Now, personally, I like to take that config folder and copy it to a local folder, and there are two different reasons that I do that. First off, I use multiple different versions of Creo Parametric. Right now I think I have everything from Creo 2 through Creo 8 installed on my computer, but I want them to access these same model check files regardless of the version that I'm using. The second reason, back in Creo 6, one of the enhancements automatically copied a bunch of modified configuration files from your current date code to the newer date code when you upgraded the software, when you went to the latest and greatest. And so it'll copy over like your config.profile, your config.sup, any whole files that are modified. There's a whole list of different files that are automatically copied when you update your Creo Parametric build code. As far as I can tell, the model check files are not yet part of that. And I got burned by that once. A few years ago when I was a CAD administrator, I set up the model check files. I was testing them out. And while I was developing them, I updated my Creo Parametric version and lost all my work. And after that, I decided I am always going to keep my model check files in a separate location from my load point so I can manage it on my own. Next thing to mention, there are a couple of configuration options to be aware of. And the first is model check enabled. By default, that is set to yes. In other words, out of the box, Creo Parametric can use model check. But just be aware that, you know, sometimes people might set it to no. So you just want to make sure that it is set to yes. And also, like I mentioned, I like to keep my model check configuration files out of the load point. So to do that, first you are going to need to set the config option model check underscore dir to the local folder that you are using. Second, in your Creo Parametric launch file, the .psf file, you can set or you need to set an environmental variable mcdir to that local folder as well. You should be able to set the environmental variable in the standard Windows 10 methods, but you can do it from the PSF file, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, lastly, before I show you the practical of how to do this, then to change your initialization settings, what's in your config init.mc file, you go to File Options Environment, and there's a Model Check Settings button, and then you can select the choice on the left hand side to edit config init.mc. You'll see all the different settings over on the right hand side of the configuration tool dialog box. Then you can check the box for an option that you want to be in the config init.mc file. 
and then click in the value cell in order to change the particular value. Then you can hit the apply button in order to save the changes to config init.mc. There are a whole bunch of other different configuration files related to model check that you can go about changing. And when you're done making all your different changes, you can click the OK button to save any other modifications and close out of the model check configuration tool. All right, let's jump out of the slides and take a look at how to do this. All right, first let's locate the default config files that are provided by PTC for model check. Here I am, currently I'm using Creo 7 MO30 and I am in my load point. And so we have a bunch of different folders over here. You're not gonna to go to parametric, you're going to go to common files. And then inside of there, we are going to find a folder MODCHK, that's for model check. Let me double click on that. Then there are folders inside of there. Go to the text folder. And then here we have our language, US ASCII. And then inside of here, there are a bunch of other different folders. So for example, there's one for spell checking. It's got your dictionary. But the one that we're interested in today is the config folder. If you go into the config folder, you'll see, hey, here are the condition files. Here's the config init file. And then we have a bunch of other different folders for our start files and constants and all sorts of other different things. But let me go back up one level. I want to copy this particular folder and I have all my different configs located in C Creo. Let me go to a folder that I set up, folder called model check, and let's copy the files into this location. I will use the paste button. So that way I've got a starting point to use for my configuration for my own personal use. All right, this is good. Next up, let's take a look at one of the config.pro settings. Here I am in Notepad, and right now I am looking at an option. It's called Model Check DIR, and I've got it set to that folder that I just copied the config folder into. C Creo Model Check. And so you want this pointing to a folder that contains the config file. You don't want it pointing to the actual config file itself. The other thing that I'm going to do, I also have my .psf file open. Let me show you where that is located. Okay, back in my Creo Parametric load point, I have Creo Parametric installed in C, Program Files PTC, Creo 7030, and then inside of the Parametric folder, you're going to have a bin folder, and the .psf file is the startup file for launching Creo Parametric. I'm going to right click on this just to show you something. I'm going to go to the properties for this particular folder. If you go to security, you want to make sure that depending on your particular role, whether you have access to modify this file or not. If you don't have modification access, you won't be able to do what I am about to do next. All right, let's cancel out of the properties. Let me close out of the Windows Explorer for the bin. And here in the .psf file, there are a bunch of default environmental variables that are created by Creo Parametric. And I'm going to go to the last line where it says, hey, add user specific environment or run applications below here. Let's go to the empty line and I'm going to type in env. This is going to be equal to mcdir and then this is going to be equal to so that's the mcdir environmental variable that i want to set let's hit the save button in order to update that now i'm going to launch creo parametric and show you how you can begin editing your config init.mc file all right, here I am in Creo Parametric. I do not have any model open. To access your model check settings, you can go to File and then Options. And then we will click on the Environment category over on the left. Here we have Model Check Settings. I will click on the button. 
and this will open the model check configuration tool. Let me make things a little easier to see. Make this dialog box a bit wider as well. Let's make the description column wider and we can make the first column for the settings. So over on the left, we have the selections for the different files that you want to set. So for example, if I expand conditional settings, here's condition.mcc, setconf.mcc, and then underneath our configuration settings. Later videos, I will show how to set your check files and your start files, but we also have constant files, status files, etc. But in this video, we are just going to take a look at config init.mc. And we can see that there are two different tabs over here. There are fewer settings on the modes tab. What I recommend is that before you start making changes in here, especially if you are a CAD administrator, you go through these different settings in order to understand what they do. And be aware that there are four different modes that you can run model check in. The most common one is interactive mode. So in other words, when you are in a Creo parametric session, you can go to model check interactive and it will run the checks on the current model that you have open. Also, sometimes in a Creo parametric session, you might run the regenerate mode, which will regenerate the model. And if I remember correctly, it actually runs model check every time that you regenerate later on in that session. You can also use save in order to have certain checks run every single time that you save your model and any other models that are saved along with it. And then there's a batch mode that you can run with or without wind chill in order to operate on a whole bunch of different files at once. So here we are on the modes tab and we have basic settings. So for example, we have this MC VDA run. This runs the geometry integrity check. So you can read about that. Here I'm going to take a look at mode run and mode update. So right now for interactive mode, it allows you to run the interactive mode. And also you can use something called mode update in order to allow different items to be updated when you are performing your model check. And then there are a bunch of different parameter settings. In other words, you can create different parameters in your models that you can use to track whether model check has been run and how many errors were generated and stuff like that. You can use a lot of these different parameter settings in conjunction with something called gatekeeper, which allows you to prevent people from checking stuff into windchill if they have too many errors. All right, then we have some advanced settings over here. I really don't care about any of the different settings on the modes tab. Let's go back to the general tab. And so here we have some different options. Let me just go to the ones that uh, I care about. So some basic settings. Here's some old deprecated settings. They're still available in there, but they don't work anymore. You're not supposed to be using them. Then you can set up different folders for outputs and stuff like that. Again, I really don't care about that. I really don't save my model check runs. And so here we have MC enabled. So yes, we want someone to be able to run model check. Here we have this save MC pre. This is an option whereby if you allow model check to update your models, whether a save will be performed before the model check or after it. So again, right now it's set to no. Yeah, I don't want it to save beforehand. All right, so let me see. I'm just going to jump to a few that I am interested in. Model check update enabled, MU enabled. I personally like that one. I'm going to set that to yes. That allows someone to update the model right from the model check dialog box. Hey, do we want to regenerate the model after model update is complete? Yes. All right, do we want to save the models? Not necessarily. Hey, you know, maybe it's something that's already been released. Maybe it's, um, you know, something that's a legacy part. I don't want to save it in the latest and greatest version of Creo Parametric. All right. Do I want to update interchange assemblies? No, I typically do not. Do I want it to be able to update sheet metal parts? Yes, I do. How about skeletons? Yes, I do. So that's good. Let me see. I'm just going to 
scan through here, see if there's any other ones that I am interested in. Okay, so here's one that I'm interested in. Skip models, yes, I want it to be able to skip models that haven't been modified. You don't have to check those different models. There's another one related to that, check all models, which will allow you to basically to override skip models. Again, you wanna read up on these different ones to see what they are going to do. For the rest of the ones here under advanced settings, I don't think there are any ones there that I want to modify. And then let's see. Report settings, hmm, don't care about those. Shape indexing, I do not use that. All right, model check, regenerate, verify family table instances. No, who knows that family table could already be released. It could be really old, don't need to mess with that. I can run model check on the family tables on their own. Model check, regen top level assembly only. It sets a no, yeah, I'm happy with that. How about regenerate dimensions on all sheets? Hey, maybe I do like that one. Oh, it's not checked. Let's check it first and then hit yes. And let me take a quick scan to see if there are any ones that I changed that are not checked over here on the left. Oh, yeah, I forgot this one that I actually do like. MC buried, ignore first wall for sheet metal parts. I'm going to set that one to yes. All right, so just a quick little scan. See if there's any other ones that I want to make sure our output to the config init MC. Now this all looks good. Let me click the apply button in order to save it. And here you can see in the message area, we successfully saved the file config init.mc. And that's all that I'm going to do for configuring model check in this video. So now that I'm done, I can click the okay button. And in that way, we've initially set up our model check in its own separate folder, as well as set up our initializations file. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.